We continue, inshallah, uh, our tafsir, and uh, today we will be uh, talking about uh, two, sh two short surahs. Um, we concluded Al Ma'un last halaqa, and today we will be, inshallah. Uh, exploring uh, Surah Al-Fil and Surah Quraysh. And these are two short surahs that are, you know, following each other. And they're considered to be even one surah because the uh, topic introduced in both surahs are so relevant to each other and attack, attached to each other, you know, in the meaning. So we'll start, inshallah, with Surah Al-Fil and then we go down to Surah Quraysh. Uh, uh, Allah Azza says in the surah, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم ترى كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل فجعلهم كعصف مأكول طيب we will go to the word by word meanings ألم ترى did you not see يا محمد what your Lord have done to the people of the elephant. طيب. Now, we know that the Prophet ﷺ was born in Amil Fil, the year of the elephant. That's how they used to, you know, mark their, the, you know, they document the history. They document history by major events. And the Prophet ﷺ was born, as it is known to us in the books of the Seerah, he was born in Amil Fil, in the year that the attacks took place. Now here Allah Azza wa is saying, Alam tara, did you not see? How would the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam see the uh, incident when he was not born or was, was just born in that year? That's, you know, something to pay attention to. Because this is what it is. It says, Alam tara, did you not see? Now, as I said again, the Prophet Sallallahu was either born before the incident or after the incident. But he was born in that year. Yes, Uncle. Yeah, just 19 days before. 19, day, 19 days before that. So here, when uh, Allah Azza is, is talking, it is different than average individuals and average human being. Uh, here, Allah the Mighty is talking. So as Allah is saying to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or conveying the message that when Allah speaks and when Allah informs you, it is more informative and affirmative and confirmative than you yourself seeing by your own your own eye. So here Allah Azza Jal is talking, is the one who's informing. And here, you know, Allah Azza Jal is is you know, uh, uh, you know, informing us how when when you hear things in the Quran or when you are reading in the Quran and you are being informed about the history and the stories of those who come before you from the previous nations. You take them by facts because the one who's talking is Allah Azza wa Jal. As if you are seeing them by your own eyes, as if you're witnessing them, because this is, you know, when we witness something, it's more, of, uh, you know, uh, and, and confirmed to us than we were informed about it. You know, someone say that something took your place, you know, in Toronto, but someone else will say, I was there and I witnessed what is happening. You know, the one who was there and witnessed what happened by the, by the eye is more, uh, inf con you know, confirmed. Uh, than the one who, had, who, heard, who heard about it. So this is what Allah Azza Jal is starting the surah with, to raise our attention to this fact, that you know, when you are informed about things in the past, that Allah Azza Jal is the one who informing you, take them as facts. And I, the story of the elephant, is, I think, is, is uh, known to many of us, and just quickly, because we have young uh, brothers and sisters in the, in the halaqa, it, it, you know, uh, the um, uh, Abraha was uh, a servant to uh, Najashi al-Habasha, the king of Abyssinia in Al-Yaman. And he once, he built um, con or constructed uh, a big uh, church uh, and wants to, to uh, you know, make it as a center of religion and wants to, to uh, you know, every pe all people to come and, and, and visit this you know, huge structure, and heard about the Kaaba, and he wants uh, to, you know, you know, prevent or distract people from going to Al Kaaba, which is a small house in the desert, 
to come to uh, you know the the Al Qulais, which is the, the 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 church that he established, and 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 divert them from going to this you know old house to this a new constructed beautifully designed a church. And when one of the Arabians heard about that, he was offended and he went to that church and did something that offended the you know the the king. And as a result of that, the king of uh, of Yemen or the servant of the king of Abyssinia in Yemen was so offended and you know asked his, the, the Jashi, the king of Abyssinia, to lend him the uh, the elephants and more specifically uh, a white elephant that the uh, king of Abyssinia used to have called Mahmoud to be uh, the leader of all the army to go and destroy and crush this you know Al Kaaba as a result of what has been done to the Al Qulais or this uh, uh, palace. Uh, you know, eventually he made his way uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, one of the, uh, uh, when he goes by uh, every tribe, uh, they, 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 they try to prevent him from pursuing and, and destroying the old house of Allah Azzal. But eventually he had a huge army. He crushed all those who opposed him in his way until he reached Al Taif and uh, a, a person so Al-Taif volunteered to be the uh, Abu Rughal, to be uh, the person who leads the army to the you know to Mecca, and eventually um, he died before reaching Mecca, and his grave became uh, an icon of Shaitan and was stoned by Arab in, in Jahiriyyah because of what he have done, uh, you know, and to leading uh, the you know the Abraha to the, to to Mecca. So the Arab used to stone him, to stone his grave as a result of his action. This is even before Jahiliyyah. This is how much, you know, uh, Arab in Jahili, uh, Arab, even before Islam, used to value uh, Al-Kaaba because it's the house of Allah Azza constructed by, you know, raised by, by Ibrahim Aslam and was constructed eventually by the Malaika, by the way, because the one who constructed, you know, the, the, uh, the Kaaba was the Malaika, even before Adam, you know, uh, you know, thousands of millions of years before the creation of Adam, when Allah Azza created the earth, uh, you know, uh, and 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 it was the earth was covered with water, and then a volcano erupted from the center uh, of uh, where the Kaaba where, where the Kaaba is right now, and then a huge uh, you know uh, piece of land was was created as a result of this volcano, and then was breaking to pieces as we know in the continents we have right now in the uh, in the world so the center of the of this you know this the earth is the kaaba geographically and as we believe in it also uh, you know in, in our religion so the 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 kaaba was valued by you know by uh, the those who lived around it from the in, in, from the people of mecca and in the surrounding areas in in uh, you know in the arabian peninsula they used to make hajj to kaaba even in jahiliya and, uh, and this is, as we will see, inshallah, next, you know, surah, how, you know, uh, Quraysh uh, gained its reputation and its, you know, uh, um, uh, recognition as being the custodian of the, of the old house of Allah, Azza wa Jal, the Kaaba. So eventually, you know, uh, uh, Abraham made his way with the, with the army. And as he uh, entered uh, the borders of Mecca, his uh, uh, leader elephant uh, would would not move forward when he uh, you know when he moved him in different direction he would you know he would uh, move but when he you know direct him towards the Kaaba he would stop as an indication that you know that you know he is commanded he's is mamur he's you know being asked not to pursue uh, even you know the, the you know the elephants or the the, the animal he knew the value of uh, the Kaaba, and eventually, when Abraham was so uh, arrogant, was so persistent, and in his actions and, and plans to pursue and destroy the Kaaba, Allah Azza intervened in the known story when he Ababil. He sent uh, 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 birds from from the hellfire, and it's good to mention that you know uh, when the Abraham uh, you know felt that uh, you know the you know the, the that he is. Uh, you know, being, you know, not co no, no one cooperates with him and help him in his uh, action plan into destroying the Kaaba. He asked his, his soldiers to capture, you know, the, the cattle and the animal of the people of Mecca. So to provoke them, because the people of Mecca, when they heard about his, 
uh, uh, coming. They consulted among themselves and the chief of Mecca was at that time, Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Prophet وسلم, And he said to them that we have no ability to prevent this uh, you know, army from attacking the whole house of Allah. So he asked them to go to the mountains and, and leave the town. And you know, when he heard that the soldiers of, uh, of um, you know, Abraha captured some of his camels, about 100 or 200 camels of his, he went to meet with, with Abraha. And this is what Abraha wants you know, to, to do. He wants to you know, communicate with the people of Mecca and find out from them you know, uh, how they uh, are going to enter, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, what's their reaction as a result of his coming to, to Mecca. And then eventually, uh, you know, uh, when Abraha saw the Prophet's grandfather, Habahu, you know, he felt his legacy. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's grandfather was, was handsome, was, you know, well uh, respected because from the first glance, as we say, the, from, the, from the first people when they see him, they, they gave him respect. And this is, subhanAllah, maybe what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had gained from him. He was also well respected and, you know, being, you know, respected from the first time when people see him. So he, 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 he did not want to sit him next to his, you know, to him in his chair, but rather he, he went and sat with him and on the ground. And he said to him, what brings you here? He said to him, I came here to ask you for, to release uh, my camels because your soldier, soldiers have captured the camels uh, from me. And then, you know, Abraha, when he heard that, he said, I did, you know, fear you uh, or, you know, I gave you the attention when I first met you. Uh, and now you're coming here to ask me about your camels and not worried about the Kaaba. I thought you're going to come here to, you know, ask me not, not to destroy the Kaaba. He said to him, The famous statement, statement that we use all the time in our discussions when we try to, you know, cross a point that I am the Lord of the camels and the house has a Lord that will protect it. But now again, this is in a time when there were no established state of the Islam. There were Islam or the deen of Allah was not established on earth. This is when Allah will be intervening to protect the house. Now in, in, in 1.7 billion uh, you know, Muslims claiming to be Muslims on earth, there is you know, no justification for them not to be able to protect and defend the deen of Allah. So uh, I am the Lord of the of the camels, and to the to the the house of Allah has, you know, has has a, Allah is the Lord of the house, and He will take care of it. Then eventually, He gave him what he came to ask for, and he proceeded in his plan and faced his fate of being destroyed with his army, uh, as Allah mentioned in the Quran. Alam yaj'al kaidahum fi tadlil. There He made. Their plot into destruction, tadlil, dalal, mischief, wa arsal alayhim tayran ababil, and sent unto them birds, uh, ababil, coming from the hellfire, uh, carrying three stones, one in each leg and one in their, you know, peak in the in the in their mouth, and 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 throw it. Every stone comes down onto a soldier from the soldiers uh, of uh, of Abraha, laratullahi alayhi. Throwing onto them stones from Sijil, from the deep valley of, of the hellfire, made them scatter as you know the you know how the plates of the uh, you know of the food uh, with you know the meat and the, the bread and the, you know uh, as being you know being attacked by those who come uh, to to eat. This is how you know the the, 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 the army was destroyed completely as a result of this. Some people say, you know, uh, they question whether, you know, Allah sent really uh, birds and, the, their, the, and, the, and stones were actually, uh, you know, uh, sent down onto, uh, onto the army, uh, you know, via those, you know, birds from Ababil or not. And they were saying maybe, you know, uh, microbes were, you know, sent down onto them. Regardless of what's the uh, interpretation of this, but we know as we said at the beginning of the surah, Alam Tara, Allah is informing right now. And when Allah informs, we take things as, as facts and truth, and we, leave, we believe in them. This incident of Allah intervening and protecting the house, his house, have gave more repetition and more value to the people of Quraysh. And in the next chapter, in which Allah Azza says, 
لإلاف قريش إلافهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من خوف. You know, uh, as I said, these we consider it, you know, to some of us, they consider them, you know, as one surah, though they're, you know, two different surahs. Allah Azza wa says, the ilafi Quraysh, rihlat al shaita'i wa sayf. Ilafihim rihlat al shaita'i wa sayf. So, as we said again, that, you know, after this incident, Quraysh gained more, you know, uh, power, more repetition, more, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, a prestige, if you want to use that word. Uh, and among the Arab, you know, uh, among the other tribes in Arabia, and for the fact, though that Mecca was in a deep, va in a valley in the in the desert that uh, has no vegetation, um, the location of Mecca in the desert or in the in the middle of the Arabian Peninsula gave it uh, a strategical, you know, uh, uh, value because, uh, as Allah mentioned, رحلة الشتاء والصيف. The trip of the winter and the trip of the the summer, because they used to commute between you know the the Bilad al-Sham, which which what's what's right now known as uh, Jordan, Palestine, Syria, Lebanon. This all used to be one one you know uh, area called Bilad al-Sham, the northern parts. Shama, Sham from Shamal, from the northern parts of the Arabian Peninsula. And they used to commute uh, to that uh, in the summer, and then you know in the winter they go to Yemen, which is in the north, in the south. Uh, and there were two empires uh, per se in, at the old time: the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire. And the you know the the the, the traffic uh, path for the for the for the for the goods or the the, the products. Uh, to be, you know, going from Yemen, which is the hub for, you know, the south and and the the Bilal Sham, the hub of the north, was actually Mecca. Mecca used to play a vital, uh, you know, role. And the Arabs, who you were merchants and and, and traders, were were actually the 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 people who have made this the the connection connect, make the connection happen. You know, the caravans used to were to travel because. You know, they, uh, you know, in the northern parts where the Roman Empire were, they did not, uh, you know, have camels in their position. They uh, were not familiar with navigating in the desert, and it was too dangerous for them to to do that. As you know, will you know the time will you know uh, come? We'll see, you know, in, like in the Sira, that you know the arm, Roman Empire's you know army did not you know interfere with what's happening in their peninsula. They cannot go into the to the desert. The same is to be said about the Persian. Uh, empire, because they did not have the means or the abilities, or they were able to, you know, get into the, you know, the desert. It's 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 very complicated, uh, you know, an environment and very harsh that they are unable to, you know, make it through. So, the uh, people of Mecca played a vital role for communicating communicating between these two uh, posts and, and 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 transporting the goods from one side to another. And as a result, make their livelihood. And Allah Azza wa is reminding Quraysh for that, you know, reminding them about His blessing unto them, how he, they are, uh, where they were to be the the hub between these two, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, position posts or two points, and, and make their livelihood. Because again, Mecca is in a valley that has no vegetations; they have no. Uh, resources that would make a livelihood for them. No, no, no agriculture, uh, no sea to fish from. They're they're primarily you know surviving on hunting. But the the Allah Azza wa here says, uh, 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 you know, uh, at the end of the surah, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ. What's أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ? Provided food for them to prevent their hunger. And protected them and gave them the security. And if you look into this, you know these two ni'mah uh, that were provided for Quraysh. Um, that these are the ni'mah that were provided to them as a result of the du'a of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Because Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he settled his wife Hajar and and her son Ismail in in um, in Mecca, what he did he say. Uh, 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 you know, he Allah prayed to Allah Azza to provide for them from His provision. Rabbi ni askin tu min duriyati buwad al ghayr di zara inda baiti kal muharram. Rabbi ni yaqiyum salat bi jalada fidat min nasi tahu ilayhum wa zukum min al thamarat. Laallahum yashkurun. 
uh, and here in Surah Al-Baqarah, the same thing, you know, uh, um, man amana minhu billah uh, so Allah, the, the dua of Ibrahim was to, uh, for Allah Azzajal to make the means of living in this remote desert area. You know, Las Vegas, as we know, is a desert. So they, you know, they, th they thought that one of the ways they can make it alive is to have uh, a gambling center. Is that what they say? That's what they say. What, stays, what takes place in Vegas stays in Vegas. But, but eventually this is not the... the, the uh, the, the, the you know the, this would not create a life. This is not يعني, what will, will will sustain a living in any in any city or any town or or, in, or any culture. The two mo most important uh, vital uh, 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 elements of 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 uh, of providing the ability of sustenance and create life are two: the amn and the food, the security as well as you know the, the, the food and they come and you know min jur, for the jur first food comes first and security comes next and then it could be it could be alternate jur and then first and then and the khawf later and, and uh, khawf security first and then you know eating afterwards food so those are the most two important uh, uh, you know factors for for providing the livelihood for people in any parts of the world in any culture and that's why Yani I wanted to make this relevant to our life. One of the things that we need to be uh, yani, uh, aware of as a new immigrant community living in, in, in the West. One of the most important things that we need to be aware of is, you know, the uh, as a community, as as parents, guardians for our children, uh, the the provision of the necessity of life of food and clothing, which is alhamdulillah available in Western societies and even available in abundance. But one of the most important uh, thing that we need to pay attention to, to which is something that we sometimes lack in the, in the societies in which we're living in is security and amn. Whether it is uh, by the attack of Islamophobia um, into the most vulnerable uh, segments of, of our society, of our community, primarily children and young and, and the sisters, even though brothers are not immune from the attacks of Islamophobic and you know, uh, uh, Islamophobic attacks onto them, and the you know the the the, the you know the, uh, the with the rise continuous rising unfortunately of of you know the extremism in the West where 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 this becomes an issue that we need to deal with and and inter and, and try to uh, you know uh, diffuse and and, and 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 reduce it to the best of our ability to ensure that our children are able to live a comfortable a, a, a decent balanced life. And one important things which I want to pay attention the parent, of the parents to uh, is the security and the un for our children as they go to schools. They are living. Our children are living in in the in the in the in the in the society in which we're living in, and they are interacting with people around them. And this is, uh, and we know for a fact that they are not protected. They are not immune from being bullied from being uh, uh, you know threatened and as as a result of that they might be and might this is a big word that i want to be careful to use might, might many of them might find themselves being pushed indirectly into joining gangs group gangs group for the purpose of i you know belonging as well as for the protection and we need we need not to talk about what are the consequences of joining gangs group uh, majority of these gangs group are, are, are groups that involved into illegal activities of drug trafficking and and this is also you know raises the, the potential and chances of crimes uh, and more you know uh, gun gun related you know uh, crimes that could lead to incidents that we have heard a lot uh, uh, you know lately in in the GTA about the, the death 
of so many young people. And when you look into the names of these who are being killed and shot as a result of gun you know, related activities or gun violence as we call as we as they call it, it's primarily coming from the you know the the um, you know being involved with gang uh, gangs gangs activities. And and one of the things that I, I hope that not only parents are aware of, but the community in general is aware of uh, is how we can protect our children from being involved uh, and provide for them the amn. Because it's a, it's, it's a must on you, it's a necessity. Because this is what Ibrahim alayhi salam have asked Allah Azza for. And these are the most important two, you know, two uh, 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 you know, elements of, of, uh, of living for any society. One of the things, and I've talked to many police officers and talked, you know, read a lot of articles uh, in, in, into, you know, what forms gangs group and why young people join them. And I'm not by any means claiming to be an expert in this area, but I'm trying to, the best of my ability to understand the mechanism, understand what motivates young people from our community to join them and, and prevent that from happening in the first place. The lack of leader, uh, mentorship in our community you know, they're, they're, you know, young people wants to belong, wants to feel the sense of belonging. They want to uh, be attached with some uh, 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 an influential figure in their life. They want a big brother or a big sister, as we know that there are, you know, the organizations of big brother, big sister, in in in, in which you know uh, uh, adults provide adults provide adults provide you know, companionship and friendship to younger people and guide them in their life. And this is not to be done by parents. Unfortunately, the relationship, in, especially in the West, between the children and the parents is not ideal and the best as it is in, in many of the, you know, uh, back home societies. So we need to somehow create this system in our community by which, you know, um, adults who, are, who have the ability to deal with young people, to you know, uh, gather these young people around them and provide for them the leader, you know, the, the mentorship they need uh, to feel secure, so to feel comfortable, to feel that they're being, uh, 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 feel the, the aspiration in their life and to be inspired by those, you know, uh, adults in their life from both boys and girls, uh, sisters and brothers, meaning to say that will help them to be able to, you know, uh, make it safely in their life. And, and one of the things that help a lot is to create the dialogue between the parents and the children and make them feel comfortable to talk to you about issues that they face in school, the problems they would face in their life. If they feel that they're being threatened or they're being bullied or they're being pushed, uh, then, uh, then they need to feel comfortable to uh, talk to you right away because they're the first line of defense for them in their life. If that you know, uh, is not available for them, it's not provided for them, does not exist, then eventually someone else will provide that for them. Someone else will give them the, feel, the, the indication that here, I am there for you. You can count on me. Come talk to me. I'll listen to you. I will help you to become rich. You're unable to buy the things that you wish to buy in your life. I can help you to do that. All it takes from you is to be doing, you know, little things in your life. Trafficking drugs. This will make you get money. This will help you to buy the shoes that you wanted to buy for a long time. This will help you to buy the clothing that you wanted to buy and, you know, be like everyone else around you in, 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 in school. So let's make sure that we're able to communicate and, uh, with our children and, 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 and give them that sense of security and the comfort of you know, coming to us and talking to us. If, and, and it, if you felt that your child is involved in into, uh, and, you know, any of those activities, if you feel that child is being dragged or absorbed by these, you know, these groups, then you, know, you could reach out for other uh, helping groups that alhamdulillah we do have now emerging that you know some groups are emerging now in our community to provide counseling for youth and and we can you know reach to uh, you know to uh, even to the uh, police officers or to, to to community police officers and talk to them about this issue and give and listen to them from them the advice on how to deal with this this is a real issue that we're dealing with in our societies do not think that we're talking about you know, things that are happening somewhere else. No, no, this is happening in our neighborhood. This is happening in our community. It's happening in the society in which we're living in. And listening to the news would, would give you, an, you know, an, an idea of what is happening. The number uh, of those who are being shot uh, around the year is increasing rapidly in, in Toronto and the GTA, not decreasing, unfortunately. The gun violence is becoming an issue right now. Gangster, you know, activities are 
are you know becoming more violent and and as a result of that you know young people are being uh, sacrificed uh, uh, in this in this unfortunately so Allah Azza wa is highlighting for us two important things security and provision of the of the of the necessities of life of food and clothing and the livelihood so this was provided as a result of the da'wah of Ibrahim alayhi salam and then eventually because of the fact that Arabs scattered, you know, we're, we're in the, uh, living out Mecca, and then eventually moved out. You know, they spread and they moved out in the Arabian Peninsula. But all of them were attached to the house because, because they were in the middle of Ibrahim alayhi salam. They were following the deen of Ismail alayhi salam. So they still, beside, you know, worshipping the statues, used to believe in Allah azza wa And they wanted, they used to come to, to Mecca for Hajj. Hajj was even known in Jahiliya. You know, that was, you know, known to, to people in Jahiliya. Unfortunately, when they do their Hajj, they want to, you know, uh, do it purely. So they say that, you know, the clothes we're wearing is, is bought by money that has some haram in it. So that's, they take off their clothes and they do their tawaf naked around the Kaaba. And, you know, if they, for the ladies, they do it at night so that they will not be seen. And, and you, know, for, for, you know, for people, they would, you know, do it as this is out of their taqwa. You know, this is how they see themselves as being muttaqi. So they, no one would dare to miss with, with the caravans or the business of Quraysh because if they happen to be traveling around the Arabian Peninsula and, 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 and a tribe you know, come across them or attack them, eventually that tribe one day will make it to Mecca and eventually they will be caught by Quraysh. So they, when they know that this is the caravan of Quraysh, they would not miss with them. So they give, it gives them the security and the, and, and the protection even before that incident. This incident came, the, the incident of the elephant, came to endorse the perception in people's mind in the Arabian Peninsula that those are people, not only, you know, custodians of the Haram, and all of us one day will make it to the Haram and we will be, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know they, they can get us if they were to, you know, attack them. But also now they, they got this, you know, uh, this incident have made them uh, believe that, you know, they are also protected by Allah Azza this house of Allah is protected by Allah and as a result of that Quraysh gained more power, more reputation. So the ilaf in Quraysh, ilaf by the way is from ilfa, from, you know, being used, customed, you know, when you become ta'laf al-shay, you know, you become used to it. You know, you go to work every day, you commute, you know, daily by the train or the, by the bus or by car. You know, this becomes a, a routine for you, a daily activity. You don't pay attention to it. You don't pay attention to uh, how, you know, uh, how much effort or what's the logistics behind, for instance, uh, commute, the bus commuting from one place to another or the, the trains commuting from one, you know, point to another point. There is so much logistics involved in the background. We normally don't pay attention to it. We get used to it. Well, so we just pay, you know, the fares and we get into the train and this, we move from one point to another. Allah is saying to the people of Quraysh, don't do not be fooled that by the fact that now you are used to commuting between Bilal Sham and Yemen and doing business and, and gaining money and gaining reputation and main, gaining power and, and you're becoming you know uh, the hub of the Arabian Peninsula. This is all because of Allah Azza's you know, blessings unto you. The ilaf Quraysh, ilaf him, the shita wa saif. So uh, do not be fooled by yourselves. You did not gain it because of your own power or your own strength, but it is from Allah Azza. Therefore, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ Remember, fa is, as a, you know, to, therefore, uh, let them worship the Lord of this house. Of this house. فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ Now, there is something that we يعني, need to explore uh, يعني, with, uh, some, with some details. It's, Allah said, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ Again, وَلِلْبَيْتِ رَبٌ يَحْمِيهِ The Lord of this house. You know, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ As if Allah is saying to them that, you know, forget about all the statues you have created and you brought from different uh, parts of the Arabian Peninsula because the first statue was brought to them from Bilad al-Sham and then eventually they created different, you know, statues and all the details. He said, forget about that and worship on the Lord of the house. The one who have made a, a value for you, who have given you this ability and power and recognition in the Arabian Peninsula and provided for you the security and the, the means of living. And here the concept of ibadah is an important issue. What, what is the first thing that comes to our mind from ibadah? The first thing comes to us is salah. You know, because you know, we, the first thing comes to us from the ibadah is salah, which is 
يعني a very narrow understanding because ibada does not only uh, uh, you know is not only limited to worshiping Allah Azza in salah it, it, it expands to different you know, uh, 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 you know uh, aspects of the life and that's why when we were talking about you know elections because this is you know the election time um, the people said that you know we need a secular system and this is a movement that started in Europe as a result of people getting tired and sick from the religious people controlling their livelihood and they said we need to rebel against that and we need to be free and that's why they you know they reject they rejected the faith religion and you know, and they they adopted secularism you know to to stay away from religion and this movement started from france as i said and then moved in the rest of europe and then it was imported after that to the muslim countries this is a wrong understanding because if the deen religion is not governing you from the first time you get up from bed to the last minute you know you go to bed and you sleep then what's the point of having a deen is deen or religion only you know a spiritual fulfillment by doing tuqus and sha'air you know by doing you know certain you know uh, actions and acts to fulfill your spiritual need and that's it no you're you're you are you know expected to be mindful of, of allah in all your life affairs you know uh, as even like you mentioned in the Quran, you know, uh, لم يحكم بما أنزل الله فأولئك هم الكافرون. ومن لم يحكم بما أنزل الله فأولئك هم الظالمون. ومن لم يحكم بما أنزل الله فأولئك هم الفاسقون. You know, حكم is ruling, and Allah Azza wa have revealed to the people of the book, وكيف حكمونك فك وكيف يحكمونك وعندهم التوراة والإنجيل. Why would they come to you, Ya Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, to ask you to you know rule for them uh, when you know many Israel had uh, and you know uh, so one of the you know uh, committed zina and they said you know they, you know they wanted to find a way out because in their scripts uh, that if, if the zani is muhsan you need to say married then they will be stoned to death and if they are uh, if he is not then he will be you you know will be it will be lashed and then uh, you know uh, they said you know some of their scholars said go to muhammad وسلم, and you know ask him if he gave you a different ruling then you know take it and if not done, you know, فتركوه, they leave it. And then eventually they came to the Prophet ﷺ and he asked them, you know, the most knowledgeable of them to bring the, the Torah. And he asked them, you know, read from it. And then they start reading and they covered their hands, you know, uh, on one of the pages. And the Prophet ﷺ said, what's under this? You know, you know, read that page. And then he eventually read. Even though the Prophet ﷺ was illiterate, did not know how to read or to write, but Allah will reveal to him and eventually and they, you know, they took all these parts from the Torah uh, that would be dealing with the ruling, with the ahkam. You know, our Quran, Quran is filled with ahkam. Ahkam al, you know, al-sariqa, ahkam al-janazah, ahkam al-qatil, ahkam al-talaq, ahkam al, you know, al-dayn, ahkam, you know, all these are ahkam, rules that are provided to us in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the book of Allah, in the Quran. So they cannot separate the hukum from the deen. It's impossible in, in the context of Islam. Now this important understanding of you know secularism and separating the deen from the is, is ir irrelevant. This is impossible. That's why we have corruptions. That's why we're, we're seeing people suffering, whether in the West or in the East, in what so-called Muslim countries or even in the Western societies, which supposed to be democratic so systems that you know that provide you know, democracy in, into the deen. Without getting into the details of the how the the appointment of the hakim will be in the Islam, this is a different issue. But in the in in general. The, you know your life is is solely based on the, that's what would make the ruler uh, be be you know just and fair and and their ruling their conscience will be will be governing them and that's also what make the ra'iyah the followers be observant to the to the hakim la sam'an wa la your sam'a and ta'a your obedience and listening will be as long as you're practicing you know the, the deen of allah if you're not practicing the deen of allah no sam'an wa la no listening no obeying period and that's why the the model of you know hukum in the early stages, whether at the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whether at the time of the you know the, the Khalifa Rashidun was a most ideal you know scenario where you know there was a, a, a harmony between the leadership and the, the followers. They were both focused into serving the deen of Allah Azza and being conscious and mindful of Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is the, the, the general concept of ibadah to Allah Azza wa However, you know, most, most, you know, the general, you know, most of the time, the first thing comes to mind is a salah. And salah 
by itself is a ibadah that includes all the shara'i of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because you're expected to say a shahada once in your life. But you know, you say a shahada once uh, someone comes to Islam, they say, Shalala ilaha illallah, Shalala Rasulullah, this is it. They have said the kalima and they become Muslim. But now it's a journey towards understanding your life and your deen. You say we, we, the shahada is you know, mentioned to us when we, the adhan is called and when we are in the salah doing the tashahud. So we say the shahada and you know, we repeat our shahada to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. And then you know, the five pillars of Islam is included in, in salah. And that's why ibadah refers to, refer to as salah because shahada is included in salah. The, you know, the, the second pillar of Islam, you know, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah, iqamat salah. You are establishing the salah, so it is part, you know, the, the, of the you know of the, the five pairs of Islam, uh, and wa ita is zakah, and to give the charity. Now charity is coming from you know making money and the surplus of your money, two point five percent of the money that has been parked in your saving account will be is your zakah. Now when you are doing your salah, you're not giving money, but you're giving the the asset of the money because. You use your time to work, and as a result of your work, you earn money and you give the zakah. But you are now giving up the time, half an hour, you know, for Salat al-Fajr, Salat al-Dhuhr, Salat al-Isa, al-Asha. This is your giving to the Allah Azza wa Jal's deen, or to, and you're worshiping to Allah in Salah, the, 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 the core of the money, the asset of the money, which is the time. And you know, iqam salah wa ita zakah wa saum Ramadan. In in your salah, you're not only abstaining from you know eating and drinking only, but you're abstaining from other lawful things. In your standing in salah, you're per, you're, you're you're forbidden from eating, from drinking, from talking, from walking, and this is uh, you know uh, uh, you know what exercise is in, in your in your fasting. And then you know, Hajj al Bayt bin Istata'i alayhi sabila. When you start your salah, you're you're tuned in line towards the Kaaba and remember yourself standing in front of the Kaaba and praying between the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. So, in, indeed, salah as a ibadah is a core of all the ibadah, it includes all the five pairs of the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. So, for us to be thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal for the provisions that He had given to us. Of the security and and the and the and the provisions of the means of livelihood of food and clothing and you know uh, and the comfort that we're enjoying in, in our life needs to be by let them worship the Lord of this house by you know uh, being mindful of Allah in all our life affairs and being more specifically conscious of our salah because salah is indeed you know, it includes all the five pillars of the deen. And that's why, you know, we, we think of ibadah as automatically being the salah. لِإِلَافِ الْقُرَيْشِ إِلَافِ إِمْرِحَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالصَّيْفِ فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ Allah Azza wa Jalla is Quraysh. Don't be, you know, ignorant. Don't be, you know, uh, adamant. You know, uh, uh, you have gained this, you know, ability and power as a result of what Allah Azza has provided to you from the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And you also have seen what happened to those who uh, who dare to you know attack uh, the house of Allah Azza wa Jal. Therefore, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ Let them worship the Lord of the house, not any other entities or any other statues. The one who provided for them the, the, the security and provided for them you know the amen. In a couple of minutes before we conclude, you know, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ عُبُودِيَّةً to Allah Azza wa Jal is a beautiful ubudiyah. In the context of the human being, and you know, our, uh, now we're talking about the Islamic you know, Heritage Month and those who have come uh, uh, in the uh, early days to Canada were primarily from the slaves who were for forced to come to you know, North America as labor, uh, you know, for, for, to be worked for their masters. Now, the, the concept of ubudiyah and the human you know, uh, understanding is very ugly because a human owns another human and the best of the human comes to the master. However, the master, the slavery to Allah جل, is a beautiful you know, relationship between the creator and the creation and the, and, the, and the human because when you are the slave of Allah جل, and surrendering and submitting to the will of Allah جل, 
you are getting the best of what Allah is offering to you. Allah is providing to you with you know with the rizq. Allah is providing you with the with the you know the uh, the, the means of your livelihood, and 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 you are as uh, 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 you know as a slave of Allah Azza wa being honored and privileged to be you know connected to Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah, the asra bi abdihi layla min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa. Allah. Honored the Prophet ﷺ by calling him the servant, the Abd. Abdi min al-Masjid al-Haram min al-Masjid al-Aqsa. When you are, you know, uh, if you want in, in, in the context of nowadays, if you want, you know, to talk to uh, someone of a position, whether, you know, a, a minister or a prime minister or, you know, or someone, you, you need to book an appointment. You need to specify, you know, the time, the topic, and, you know, and you will be, you know, limited, you know, from, uh, you know, for, for a very specific time, very short time, and, you know, it takes long for you to be able to get that appointment but when you are you want to communicate with Allah Azza wa all it takes from you is to take a couple of minutes to do your wudu and to take the time you choose and and the long you want to talk between your Allah Azza and your Salah the Salah is communicating between you and Allah Azza you're talking to Allah you're conveying to him and that's why Allah Azza said وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ أَوْ وَإِنَّ الْإِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ So what a beautiful, you know, thing to be a slave to Allah. Being a slave to Allah will help you to get the best of what Allah is offering to His creation. And being slave by a human is, is an ugly form of, the, you know, of, of humiliating and, and taking advantage of others in their life. With this, inshallah, we will conclude the dars and stop here and inshallah next time we will talk about uh, 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 Surah Al-Humaza and Surah Al-Asr which is a short surah but uh, a very meaningful surah that has deep meanings that we pray to Allah to help us be able to understand and comprehend and apply in our life Allahumma ameen Jazakumullah khairan Assalamu alaikum